Recently, John Kelly, a good friend of mine who's the pastor of Chicago West Bible Church, came and preached a message in our series on justice. I encourage you to go and listen to that message in case you missed it. But after that sermon, we sat down and had a conversation, just two pastors talking about how to lead our churches in this current cultural moment. We talked about the political climate, about racial tensions, about people growing closer to Christ. And rather than make you listen to an hour-long conversation between two pastors, we've broken that up into segments. And so what you're about to see is the next segment in a conversation between two pastors. There is this stigma that like anybody who's uh, white is, is a Republican and racist, and anybody who's black is like this liberal. That's not and, true. And it's not, yeah. but it, like, uh, yeah, I don't even wanna get down that road, yeah, but it's not true. And, and, but, there, but that's the way that the world has painted it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've heard radical right and radical left more than I've heard in like the last 10 years, oh, yeah. right? It's just, it just gets more and more div like divided. Um, yeah. Can you just, how does that work out in, in your context? Um, because I think there's this, one thing that is a conversation killer sometimes is that we automatically have preconceived ideas about each other, preconceived notions yeah. about each other. So when you think about politics, just what comes to your mind when you hear Republican, Democrat, and how have you seen things maybe play out in the yeah. world that you live in? What comes to my mind is trouble when I hear that. Um, it, there's so many words that uh, are trigger words for people because we, like you, we make associations immediately. We hear something, we think, I know what that's about, and we assume we know what those people are all about, what they think, what they're like. And I, I think um, it's, it, it's um, chasing down every nuance, answering every question, um, un, un, deconstructing every false argument is exhausting, and I'm not, I'm not up for the task. So I feel like what God's put on my heart is just keep calling people back to Christ. Keep calling people back to Jesus because he's the great uniter. And despite what every president in office says they're going to do, Jesus is the one that unites us in calling people back to his word because um, the, they're so, I, I feel as if um, sort of the, the, the uh, liberal progressive movement that's seeping into the church in a way that's unhealthy and, 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 and smuggling in some things that, that are not gospel-centered and then sort of the extreme right white nationalist or Christian nationalist that, where we're conflating uh, our faith with our, our, our country is also unhealthy. I think Satan's having a field day on both sides, mm. just stirring up both pots and getting both people to drift further apart and, as you said, hate each other. Mm. I, don't know, I, don't, I don't have the equipment to answer all that, but I do know who Jesus is, and I do know God's words. So I feel like, well, in my context, in our context, just keep calling people back to him. And I don't mean center, because I don't think... I don't think that Jesus is a middle ground between everything. He's other than. He's different than. He breaks all categories, mm. as you said. Mm. Um, but it's a challenge. I, 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 we've talked about this personally, but more in the last couple of years than the last two decades. Yeah. I think that the, 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 um, the witness of the church is being compromised by political ideology and divisiveness. I remember I was on that panel, mm -hmm. as that's at one point was like, all right, don't invite John any more panels. I remember what you said. Love you, Ed. Love you, Ed, right? But... Because you, you said I'm tired of panels. Yeah, I go to, like you go to panel after panel, you know, and it's like, you know, hey, what's the five books you recommend? And it's like the same five I said last time, you know. It's like it's like man, you could just go YouTube a panel discussion because no, it's not like we're regurgitating the same thing. Yeah, yeah, forget that question. No, no, no. So no, no, I'm not saying <laughs> that you. No, but but yeah. no, but here, here's the point that I'm just trying to make is like, I'm just telling you. Yeah. Having lunch with someone will be better than any seminar. It will be better than any book. Like truly, like breaking bread at the table will be the best thing. Like, cause when honestly, I found that the people, whether it be Democratic, Republican, far left, far right, the people that hold the line the most, the people that are very harsh and blunt Christians the most, tend to not have truly diverse relationships. Mm -hmm. That's what I've found. Like, no matter what ethnicity you are, no matter what background, the people that are like, if you don't, da, 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 it's like you normally don't, you probably don't talk to anyone in that category. Uh, John, I think you taught me that when we sat at lunch for the very first time. I learned more in our conversation, just hearing your story about your family, talking about our kids, talking as fathers. Because when I wrestle, when I read books, I wrestle with ideas. And I find myself agreeing, disagreeing, deconstructing, arguing in my own head. When I sit across the table, it's with a brother about life and experience when you talk to people um when you actually talk to people you may not even agree but how many times have you said 
man, I don't agree with what she did, but I understand why she did it. Yeah. I don't agree with what he did, but I understand why he did it. I understand why he feels that way. Now, that's not the right way to respond, but, man, I understand. And you don't gain understanding if you don't talk to people. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening a lot of time is Christians refuse under any circumstance to talk to someone. We refuse to go to Samaria.